You're listening to The Upland Rookie, a podcast presented by Gunner Kennels, Onyx Hunt, Nastra, and Anookshook Professional Dog Food. And today you're listening to episode 90 with Jeremy Lowry, a fan favorite. I want to welcome and thank my newest sponsor, Nastra, the National Shoot to Retrieve Association, for being a sponsor of this podcast. Super proud to be uh, connected with Nastra. It's been a field trial game I have loved for many years. Nastra has been a premier walking field trial organization since 1978, with 31 regions across the continental U.S. and Canada, hosting over 800 trials per year. If you're looking for a fun, family-oriented field trial association or organization for you and your dog, Nastra is the place to be. All pointing breeds are welcome, and Nastra has a unique amateur program to help teach and coach new handlers as they get started in their field trial career. If you are looking to extend your hunting season, learn new things, and make new friends along the way, this is the place to be. Check out nastra.org, that's N-S-T-R-A dot org, to find a region close to you and follow along on social media, Facebook and Instagram. I'm also proud to welcome Gunner Kennels as one of the newer sponsors of the podcast as well. Gunner Kennels, the best kennel on the market today. Man's best friend deserves man's best kennel. You know I've tried every single kennel brand on the market, all the big brands, tried them all, personally used them, and Gunner Kennels is where I have landed. It is the safest, toughest kennel out there on the market. They have everything you need from accessories, all weather kits, food bowls, food crates, you name it. Uh, They're going to hook you up and make it last (laughs) in the Gunner way. They over-engineer every single thing, and I love it. Uh, Check out GunnerKennels.com. I just picked up the new Food Crate 30. It is a perfect size, perfect size for those quick weekend hunts, three, four-day hunt, um, where you don't need to lug around the full Food Crate. Um, So Food Crate 30 is a really, really sweet deal. Um, So check them out, Gunner.com. You won't regret it. Anook Shook, professional dog food. Speaking of food crates with the Gunner segment, uh, Anook Shook, you, you better take a, a full bag of Anook Shook and put it in that food crate 30 from Gunner. Perfect match. Uh, Anook Shook Pro, guys, it has been the best food I have fed my dogs. Uh, again, I've tried personally, not personally, I have not tried the food, but my dogs have. <laughs> God, this this went sideways. Um, but Anook Shook, it's been um, a super high dense uh, formula that I trust, I believe in. I've seen the results. I've seen my dogs on some other foods where I've needed to feed them a ton of food to keep uh, their energy up and uh, keep them going on those harder, longer hunts, early season, late season. Uh, since switching to Anook Shook, I've never had an issue uh, with my dogs. Uh, uh, endurance uh, on longer hunts and it's just been a really high quality food i love the company um, run by really good people so check out anookshookpro.com uh, my dogs are on the 2616 right now in the summer and as we roll into september i will switch them back to the 3025 uh, great formula anookshookpro.com onyx hunt If you don't have it downloaded on your phone right now, I would encourage you hit pause, go download Onyx, sign up for a subscription. Rookie 20 is going to save you 20% off your yearly membership to Onyx Hunt. Guys, it is a necessity. It is is no longer a a tool that you might need to have. Onyx Hunt, I believe, is a, is a, a digital mapping software system that every hunter should have every hunter um being able to carry that with you um pre-season during season during a hunt to know exactly where you stand on public or private land who owns what where can you go uh identifying different um land types crop types tree species you name it onyx hunt is uh one of just a necessity i believe a necessity to every uh hunter whether you're big game a waterfowl upland i think it really shines in the upland space though being able to um, hunt public land and know exactly where that land is Um, that was a big um struggle for me getting into upland hunting was just knowing where i could hunt well since i started using onyx it opened up a whole Whole new world um, and thousands and thousands and thousands of acres of publicly accessible land. So check out onxhunt.com. Get signed up as we head into season. 
Hey, what's going on, everyone? Welcome back to the podcast. So good to be with you guys. We are early July right now and uh, looking ahead. We're looking ahead at the 2023-2024 Upland bird hunting season. Uh, I've just had this itch just to uh, just to talk hunting, just to talk some honey. I saw someone post a, a while back, uh, maybe a couple weeks ago, someone uh, posted on, on Instagram and uh I think they, they might tag me in the post too, but they're like, can we just get back to talking hunting? <laughs> I, I love the, the training. I love the breeding episodes of, of all the different Upland podcasts, but they're like, can we just get back to some hunting talk? And so who else would I call? Who else would I turn to in a time of need than my good old buddy, Jeremy Mustache Lowry? So we got, uh, we got Jeremy back on the podcast, a fan favorite. Um, so we check in with him. How's North Dakota looking? How's Montana looking? And uh, also just catch up on, on life with Jeremy. He's, he's got a brand new pup he's really excited about. Uh, we talk about Penny, Banks, and uh, what, what Jeremy's been up to with those, uh, with those dogs. So um, it's a fun one. We're excited to uh, just talk some hunting. Just talk, hey, let's, let's get back into this. Let's get our minds focused. Let's get our minds right and excited and pumped for the new season. Um, it's kind of just around the corner, but it also couldn't come soon enough. So um, other than that, we're going to keep this intro pretty short and uh, we're going to get ready to roll. I do, um, again, just, just a quick shout out to uh, a new sponsor, Nastra, National Shoot to Retrieve Organization. Uh, we're going to get those guys on the podcast here soon. Talk a little Nastra, get a little behind the scenes, talk with some of the, uh, the national champion winners here very soon. I'm super pumped. Um, I think I've said it before, but it's a, it's a trial game I've been running in for a few years now and I've met some great people, um, some mentors, honestly, in my life now who have kind of not just helped mentor me in the Nastra game, which I've, I've needed and, and appreciated, um, but also so mentors that just can talk wild bird hunting, can talk uh, dogs, maybe some issues you've, you know, I'm having with my dog. I can bounce some ideas off. Um, and again, share some laughs, some food, uh, memories. Um, it has been an incredible experience. So make sure you guys check out, uh, if you're at all curious on going, hey, I, I kind of want to see what this Nashville is all about. Well, head over to Nashville, find a region close to you. Um, they're going to be holding events, seminars, uh, trialing sessions, all sorts of stuff. You can get connected with your regions, uh, kind of the, the head of that, that region, ask questions, and uh, just dip your toe in. Um, we've had people in the Rocky Mountain region even come out to uh, just observe. They, they didn't even bring a dog. They just came out to observe, kind of see what it's all about. You're welcome to do, to do that as well and, uh, and just see what it's all about. But you, I, I guarantee you, you will meet some great people who uh, will take you under their wing and kind of show you the ropes of what it's all about. If you're on the other spectrum and you're going, you know what, I have a, I have a badass dog and I want to just, just throw them in there and compete and you know, I'm going I'm to figure out the rules and, and just go for it. Well, that's awesome. Do it. <laughs> Sign up, become a member today at nashra.org and uh, find, a, uh, find a trial that's coming up near you and uh, just jump in. I, I kind of took that approach. Um, again, I didn't think my dog was um, incredible, but um, I kind of took the approach of going, you know, I kind of wanted just to figure it out and jump in. But when I did, again, I had some, some great people come alongside me, kind of show me the ropes, help me understand um, how, to, how to run a, a brace. Some, some do's, some don'ts, all that stuff, which I am internally grateful for. And so, uh, yeah, so check out nashra.org. Uh, it's a great uh, association that um, I, I think is a really uh, fun time uh, to extend the season uh, in that springtime after wild birds have closed. Um, again, it's not wild bird hunting, and it's not meant to be wild bird hunting. It is a trial. It is a game outside of wild bird hunting, but uh, I believe uh, if, if it's for you, you can do both. You can wild bird hunt with your dogs. You can run trials, whatever it might be. It is a blast, though. So check out nashra.org, and uh, it's a lot of fun. Let me know if you have any questions. Um, if I don't know the answer, I will connect you with some people who do. Alan Hyman, Andy Taylor, a whole bunch of people who uh, who I really um, believe in and just have, have a lot of wisdom. So anyways, um, we're going to jump in to episode 90 with Jeremy Lowry. Here we go. What are you, what are you feeding that dog? Just Chicken nuggets? Apparently, well, he did steal a bunch of ribs off the counter like two days ago. So. Oh gosh! And you wonder why he threw up? That's well, two days ago. Well, yeah, it takes time to digest, I guess. Yeah, did he eat the bones. Eat the bones and everything. Uh, 
I told myself he got the piece without the bone because he ate it really fast. But guess we'll find out. Oh God, it's always something, man. So, it's always something. We're gonna we're, yeah, we're gonna we're this, gonna jump on here, and then you're like, "Oh, my dog threw up." Yeah, yeah. Likely excuse. I got. I can go show you the wet carpet. No, I'm spot. okay. I just had the freaking vacuum. No, I'm okay. So, you you vacuum wet carpet. I shampooed it. Which is, I always keep that thing on hand because I got a puppy, so it was ready to go. I, I just learned that you have a, you own a carpet shampooer. Well, yeah, you got to if you have puppies. I've had two puppies in the last year. Wow, you must, you must really care about a, about a clean house. Oh man, I hate the smell of dog, which is really bad because I really like dogs. Oh gosh, you're, uh, there's a new layer to you. I just learned. Yeah. <laughs> like an onion. <laughs> oh, God. Like a like a really bad onion. Yeah. How have you been, buddy? I um, missed you. Oh good. Just been working like crazy. Yeah. Running dogs just whenever I can. I've been on nights for like the last three weeks. And shoot, I think I worked two hundred hours in two weeks. I'd just get home early in the morning, work dogs for an hour, crash till three in the afternoon. <laughs> it's wild. Not a bad life. Making a lot but, of money and uh running dogs, so it's not a bad Yeah, trying to put it away so I can go hunt all freaking September and October. You uh saving up for that vacation time? Oh yeah, I'm racking it up. Your your boss is pretty cool with you uh taking off September, October and November. He better be <laughs> working 200 hours in a pay period in the summertime. It's worth it. So he it. can go drink on a boat, you know? <laughs> it's worth it. It is worth oh, it. Oh, it is. Well, dude. I'd work more if it meant hunting more in September. Well, that's true. Dude, September's going to be here in a little over, what, 50 days? 55? Yeah. Something like that? I, I, try, I try not to count. <laughs> you try not Just to. under two months. Okay. Yeah. Well, that, that helps. It's getting close, man. It's getting close. Have you uh, uh, have you been running on public land at all? Have you seen any seen any birdies? No, I I've been trying to stay off of it. It opens up here pretty soon, and I might just usually every year I'm like, oh, I won't I won't go on public land right when it opens because it is a little sure. early. But I saw a brood of pheasants the other day. Them chicks. They were huge. Oh, really? I don't know if they nested early or what. So I might hit one just that first day just because, you know, anxious and sure. run the older dogs that won't, you yeah, know, yeah. take out young birds. Yeah. But, I, was, uh, that, was that last year you and I were – well, no. That was, it would have been the year I came up. So it was like two or three years ago. Um, remember, I think there was a late hatch. So we were hunting yeah. in September, right? Yeah, we were hunting in September, yeah. and then the, chi- the, the young birds were tiny. Oh yeah, so yeah. Cool. That was same last year too, but this year, yeah, I, it was what the last. I think it was the Fourth of July. I ran over to Sydney, Montana, and saw one cross the road. I was like, I had to do a double take. I was like, because they were, I mean, they were the size of a just a little bit smaller than a chucker. Like they Dang. were a little bit bigger than a bob white. Yeah. Like they were good sized yeah. chicks. Dang, I, I couldn't believe how big they were. That's crazy. Because usually pheasant are. I thought they were a little bit later in the the hatch or whatever sure. compared to a hunt and a sharp tail. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, it's coming, coming quick. Um, well, thanks for jumping on here, man. Uh, it's gonna be fun, uh, fun catching up with you. Um, you know, it's always fun to kind of see what you've been up to and I know you got a new pup we'll talk about. Um, and then also North Dakota, Montana, that kind of stuff. But, um, first off, how is the, uh, how's the, how's the weather report? Can you give us a, a forecast update for the northern region warm but not too warm <laughs> i don't know uh we've got a lot of rain. wow you'd make a great like, forecaster thank you, you just need a you know uh, big map behind you and right a green screen no it's been a it's been a wet one like i, I bet we've gotten rain every week since freaking april at least once but it hasn't been enough to flood anything I mean, our cover is ridiculous right now, at least by me. Sure. It's it's thick. I took the puppy out there the other day, and <laughs> it was probably only, shoot, I don't even know, a couple hundred yards we walked. 
he was exhausted when we got back from plowing through all that <laughs> oh, that grass he's just and so hay. thick. Yeah, Dang. yep. He's not that big yet. Not, that's a good problem. So, that's a good problem to have. Yeah, yep. That's awesome, man. Well, that's so. Yeah, I mean, that, that's, I'm optimistic. That's good. That's um, yeah. I mean, we've had Colorado. We've had rain for the last two months, or so, even three months. I would say almost every day. Um, yeah, it looks of, like you guys are finally getting some. I know. Kind of feels like Florida a little bit, where it, <coughs> it's a uh, storm. <laughs> humid. Comes, well, not humid, but like the storm rolls in almost consistently every day at like one, two p.m. And it, it just it pours for a little bit. Thunderstorms, then it's fine. Um, yeah, so it's very very consistent. Yeah, we've got a lot of that too. Yeah, yeah, we need it. So oh, absolutely, we'll take it. Yeah, absolutely. Now, I think I read a report the other day. Um, Colorado's gotten, I think we're over our yearly average average already for the year, just since, you know, the last couple months. So it's been coming down pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't know where we're at compared to previous years, but well, you're, compared you're to the last two dry. years, we've gotten a lot. Were you dry? <laughs> yeah. You were pretty dry last year, weren't you? Up there? Oh yeah. It was, it was drought for sure. Okay. Okay. But you couldn't even tell now. Yeah, that's awesome, man. Made up for it. Yeah, ten four. Um, so what are your what are your thoughts for this coming season, man? What do you uh you gonna stay in North Dakota, Montana pretty much, or are you gonna venture other places? What what are you thinking? Oh, I got I haven't I think I'm gonna do Kansas for sure. Late season, like January with with a buddy. Okay. Um have you have you done Kansas before or? Nope. Okay. I was supposed to go last year and then <laughs> bailed out like three weeks before the trip to go to Arizona. Shocking, Jeremy. Shocking. Yeah. I wasn't going to go to Arizona and I just kept seeing everyone post pictures and I'm like, man, I want to go back to Arizona. It's warm. It was like negative 30 here. I was over it. So Arizona seemed a lot warmer and nicer. So, so. so are you going to hit Kansas and then Arizona again or? I told myself I wasn't going to go to Arizona this year. We'll see what happens. So you'll go to Arizona this year? Probably. Probably. I mean, it's basically yeah. on. Kansas is basically on the way. Right? Only a couple hours out of the way. <laughs> but, yeah, I, I'd like to chase Bob White. That's why I'd go to Kansas. Okay. Um, I'm going to try to get over to Wyoming in September for blue grouse. And then... I'm probably going to go to South Dakota in September for prairie chickens. And then obviously Montana, do my my weekend sage grouse trip. I heard Montana's not that, I usually, not, not that good, but it's just, just my opinion. Yeah. Well, North Dakota either. That's why I leave so much. Well, yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd rather hunt Florida if I were you, but just my, you know, just my personal or, opinion. I, I prefer Ohio, but Florida I've heard is <laughs> yeah, pretty good. We, we have a lot of friends in Ohio. <laughs> Yeah, that wasn't an accident. <laughs> you, you know who you are. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's awesome. No, they'll, they'll both be here. Yeah, that's Those awesome. Those friends. That's awesome. He Ben called me the other day to be like, you still got a room? And I was like, Ben, you're the only one that comes out on North Dakota's opening day. <laughs> Everyone else waits till like late, to, like the end of September when it's cooler. Uh -huh. Not nah, Ben. He's nope. got to, he's got to be here. Bright and early. Opening day. Bright and early. Yeah. I, I, I see his point though. I mean, so, I, I do appreciate a good opening day. He um, likes to take a break in the middle of the day when it's hot. So well, it works out. Yeah. Less wear and tear on the dogs. And that's true. Yeah, I mean, and he shoots so good. He only needs to hunt ten minutes a day, anyways. So, one shot, two he's birds. He's not like me. he's not me and you. It's got to hunt all day for it, you know. <laughs> yeah, wait, hunt, or at least half and, at least half a day. Well, yeah, hunting until you know last light, <laughs> trying to get our get our yeah. second bird. We just we just need two more. <laughs> oh gosh. Oh gosh. Freaking Ben sees four bird, or you know, his three bird limit, three shots, and he's probably yeah, he's, he's good. calling he's her good to go. <laughs> Dang. Yeah. Oh, that's fun, man. That's fun. You uh, you rent out your place this season a little bit, or uh, kind of un unofficial out, but no, I, I I don't charge people usually. Usually, it's pretty good buddies that come stay with me, but it stays pretty full. No, I'm sure. <laughs> September and October, I'm sure between family and friends. So yeah. you <laughs> you shot me a couple dates the other day. It's so confusing to read your. I just asked. I asked you for the dates 
that you were available and you sent me all the, oh. <laughs> you sent me this long message. Oh, when everybody else yeah, that I'm I like, knew for it's sure hard was going to be. Do. My- Just tell me the dates you are available. <laughs> That's harder. Basically did the opposite. Because I don't know those dates. The other dates are in my head. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Because I already have them written down. So, Dude, you're crazy. Just don't plan. Basically, I gave you the dates. You have to look at them. Don't plan those ones. The rest are open. My brain doesn't work that way. Uh, your brain's messed way. up. You, you still use a calendar. Who does that? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. I, I half thought you were joking when you said that the other day. And I was like, no, he's probably actually serious. No, I don't use, I haven't used a calendar and I don't even. Hence why you were 10 minutes late jumping on this podcast. I forgot about it. If you wouldn't have texted me, it wouldn't have happened. <laughs> and, your, and your dog threw up, that's right. Well, the dog really did throw yeah. up, but yeah. yeah, I forgot I'll ask, completely. I'll ask Banks later. <laughs> yeah. Hey, did you, uh, never told have you, uh, changing subject, subjects now, um, I, have you jumped on the threads app? Everyone's. I don't know what that talking. is. <laughs> oh god! Why am I now surprised? Actually, I've seen. Now that you mentioned See? that, I've seen this girl I went to high school with. I think she has an OnlyFans, and she posted to follow her on Threads. And I was like, "What the hell is the Threads?" <laughs> oh my god! So I figured it was so, another. So you OnlyFans. have heard about it? Yeah, it's not an OnlyFans. I I don't know. I I, not at I all. haven't jumped on it. You don't have it? No. Oh. It's it's through Instagram. Yeah, it's like a from what I've heard, it's like a Twitter oh. for Instagram. Isn't Twitter Twitter for Instagram? I, I don't know, man. I, that's what I thought. Twitter Twitter it's, for Facebook. I don't even know what Twitter Facebook is anymore. Facebook Instagram. What's Facebook though? Facebook's Instagram, but like more drama for old people. <laughs> you think, yeah, you think there's more? Dogs. You think there's more drama on Facebook in the Upland world or Instagram? Oh, Facebook. You think so? Oh. Easy Facebook. Yeah. Oh Sounds like gosh, you no scroll through a lot of those comments. Dude, I, I get lost in them. They're so funny. <laughs> you, just go to, you just go to uh, Project Upland page and just start <laughs> scrolling all the... Yeah, I'm just a guy eating popcorn in that meme, you know, just watching. Like, that's me. Silent. I try not to comment because everything gets misconstrued. So I just sit on the sidelines and enjoy everyone else bash each other. It's great. But there's no really need to comment even cause, cause everything's been said already in, in a different, in a different way <laughs> and, and probably a better way, yeah. honestly. Yeah. Oh man. Oh, yeah. Definitely Facebook. That's good times. No, I've, I've not got, got on the threads thing yet. I don't know what it is and just sounds like another thing to try to manage. Yeah. So I probably, I probably won't be jumping on that wagon. Yeah. It took me long enough just to get on the Instagram wagon, and let alone the Facebook wagon. Hey, so. it's, Instagram's how we met, man. Yeah, crazy. That's, That's how I had – most of those people that are coming to stay with me are all people I freaking met from Instagram besides family. Yeah, you got a you got a pretty good track record so far. No one's uh, tried to murder you yet. Got to lull them in first. <laughs> oh, God. Give them that false sense of security, you know? First? What's next then? I guess <laughs> buckle up. I guess we'll all God find out. Almighty. That first night I stayed at your place a couple years ago, I, I did not sleep well because I thought you were going to try to murder me. Yeah, it's the mustache. <laughs> I was like, who is this guy? Like, why did I drive <laughs> up here with to someone's house I never met before? Yeah, and now I'm going to go ride in a truck with them all day <laughs> with guns. <laughs> exactly. Oh. The, the first couple of times I met someone from the internet, like my buddy Josh, I remember him picking me up. <laughs> and he had a he had a pistol sitting there. I was like, Jesus, you gonna shoot me? You know what? One second. And I ran to my truck, grabbed my pistol, I said, just so the playing fields are even. <laughs> oh <laughs> uh, gosh. Now I don't even think twice about well, it. Oh no, you're just you go up to random strangers and as long as they have a bird dog, you're best friends. Yeah, I'm I'm ready to go. Is, so whatever <laughs> whatever happens, happens. It is the common denominator, is the uh yeah. bird dogs. I just yeah, I just, like I said, get everyone false sense of security, and then I'll strike and take the best dogs that I've hunted with. So, yeah. yours are safe. <laughs> oh, gosh. Well, <laughs> you, you <laughs> almost got rid of Gage in Arizona because he was pissing all over and whining. <laughs> yeah. I like Gage. He's a good bird dog, though. I, I can deal with little little things as long as they're finding birds. I, I don't think you slept that whole trip because he was whining in, in his uh, crate. 
you know, I gave you shit about that, and I sent my dog to Arizona, and he's notoriously pretty good in the kennel, you know, quiet, rides great. I guess <laughs> I guess Emily couldn't pull over and sleep the whole way oh, down God. to Arizona. He would just whine in his kennel. I was like, oh, my God, I'm Banks is Gage. <laughs> I think it's just it's because he doesn't do that. He doesn't do that with me. Right. He's like the best kennel rider. Yeah. And I think it's just, yeah, being with different people. Yeah, I think it trapped in a car for 20 hours. Yeah, no, I, I think there's something to that. I think it's just, whether you call it separation anxiety or, or just like it's different, it's new people, new truck, new everything. And, and dogs just get a little, yeah. little amped up. Yeah, Kevin told me that he was whining in the dog box. And I, I was, I know people like trainers are always like, oh, you know, clients will always be like, my dog never does this. And I was like, I feel like that guy, except <laughs> my dog never does this I know. for me. <laughs> now I feel like a liar, <laughs> like I'm lying to myself. Exactly. I mean, you probably are. And it's embarrassing. Oh, but... gosh. Oh, no, I'll tell you all my dog's flaws. Every one of them. Every, every single one. Dude, you, yeah, uh, a lot you did them. a lot of work. It's been a minute since we've talked to you on the podcast here, but you you did a lot of work with, with Banks over the last several months, haven't you? It's getting him broke. And how's he, how's he doing? Yeah, he's doing good. We're almost, uh, it's probably 70, 30, 60, 40. Anyways, we're 50, almost 50? steady to shot. Steady to shot. Uh, my, I let my buddy, because I was working, I let my buddy run him in Nastra last weekend, and he almost had a third place open, but he did take first in amateur. Oh, nice. Which really just aggravated me, because he's always, a, he's a dickhead. But Wait, he, he, took, he, been, took first, like, if, he took first in, in the amateur? Yeah, okay. and he was he's running for my buddy Drew. I'll run him, and he'll spit the bird like three feet from me. And uh, Drew ran him. He goes, "Oh, his retrieves were perfect. I couldn't ask for better retrieves." And he, he just he did everything perfect, oh, pretty gosh. much. And I just like what a what a jerk. <laughs> so I was like, "You can run him all you want," because it's funny because his dog usually runs better for me too. So oh, interesting. I don't know if it, they just read our body language, stressed or whatever excited oh gosh but he did pretty good so Dang. i was happy for him Dang. he's a nice dog he is a great dog man i uh when he's not stealing stuff off the counter well, or eat, yeah eating or throwing eating up on the carpet puking on your carpet um i ran someone's oh, dog man. at the last trial i did uh the natural trial and uh the dog would not run for me um someone was he the, the owner was sick so but he wanted his dogs to run still so he he couldn't come someone brought his dogs for him <laughs> And uh, I ran his dog, and man, this dog was just like lost without the owner. Yeah, it, it l literally really lost. Either. Like it was just it was looking around all confused, and it w wouldn't run. And so ended up getting DQ'd. And then they uh, they had to throw a bye dog in. But it uh, I never ran. Someone's... It's funny how some dogs yeah. won't run for somebody else. Yeah, I think my dogs would run for. They might not listen to you, but they're gonna go find birds. Right, you know. Right. This, yeah, this dog would not find birds. Even it was, it was so yeah dependent, which I mean, which is great. I mean, it's, it's connected to the owner, but it was, it was looking around for him. I was like, where the heck yep. is my my handler? I uh, I was at a trial and actually, the last endurance Nastra, the national championship in Montana, the dog that won that. He'll only run for his owner. I watched my buddy Chad try to run him. He ran out there, did a quick lap, ran back to the chain gang and sat down. <laughs> so he had to go grab, and he's a national, like oh that gosh. dog lives the hunt. Yeah. I don't, he's just like, and we kind of have a theory. He just doesn't like Chad, which is understandable, but. <laughs> Poor Chad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't think anyone's ever said Poor Chad. <laughs> I take that back then. I don't think he. I don't think he listens to podcasts. Okay, well, I think we're good. <laughs> well, good. I hope. Oh, uh, he knows. Well, I'm sure. Um, yeah. Well, dude, talk about the, how's the new pup right now. Well, first off, how's Penny? Let's talk about Penny first. Let's do a quick Penny check in. How's she doing? How's my girl? My boo. Uh, she's same old, same old. She's doing good. Uh, <laughs> yeah, pretty much, pretty much. I uh, <laughs> I've been training with this new buddy, David, and. Uh, I was like, oh, let's, he's got a three-legged Brittany. It broke its leg and had it amputated. And I almost had Penny's amputated last fall. Oh, that's right. And decided to wait. And it's been great in the summer. Like, it's almost like, I can't believe I almost chopped her leg off, but I'm pretty sure winter will get here and I'll be like, it's time to time to go, you know? <laughs> but uh, we're out there. And I was like, yeah, let's, let's run the two Brittany's. She's been doing really good lately. She's been holding birds back in banks. Yeah. 
she went out there and right out of the gate just <laughs> brought me four quail. Didn't point. Didn't. I was like, oh, just, no more. Oh, just brought her back. Oh no. Yeah, yeah. Just ran, scooped them up, brought them back. And I mean, in like, it's a big field, probably forty acres. I I bet she had those. We put seven out. I bet she had those four birds in less than five minutes. Oh my gosh. I, it, I really bums me out that I screwed that dog up, oh, so, up so bad because she's the best bird finder I have, hands down. <laughs> Easy. No comparison. She's a good flushing Brittany, though. Oh, yeah. You keep her close. You're going to kill some birds. Yeah, I mean, you're sure. going you're gonna to bag a, a limit of pheasant. <laughs> just, don't, just don't drop her in the best pheasant slew you know of because you'll just pretty much watch hundreds of pheasants fly for a while, and your buddy from Colorado, his face will get a little red. But other than that. my face was never red. I it was, I was just amazed at how many birds Mine there were. Mine was red. Well, I'm sure yours was. Uh, I'm sure yeah, you've probably was. never seen that. She was just trying to show you that you know, like on those flush clips where they show hundreds of birds getting up. She just wanted you to have that experience. Yeah, well, of course, you have a hybrid. I mean, you have a special dog. You have a hybrid dog. She can point. She, when range she, she can point when she wants to, and then flush when she also wants to. Yeah, yeah. She, I love her. She's still always going to be my favorite dog. She's a good, for sure. she's a good dog. Then my brother that I, he moved out here and he just got an English setter, uh, from a a Nastor breeder. And I had my doubts about her because we didn't really get to hunt her this fall. She was so little, you know, and she wasn't. Did he get her start shoot. started or was she a pup? No, we that we were really. I mean, her obedience and house manners were through the roof because we had her all winter. And she, we spent no time outside because it was freezing, and she was so little. And then last, those last pictures I posted. So Tuesday, I ran her. Would have been her fourth time on birds. The first time she didn't point a single bird. She, I launched, launched, launched. I think it was four or five pigeons for her. No points. Bird crazy, but no points. And then the second time, it was like she'd been doing it her whole life, and she's been. Oh man, she's been a lot of fun. Oh, that's great, man. She's gonna be, and she's gonna probably. She might be nicer than Banks. Dang, is she is she related to Banks at all, or? Uh, kinda down the line through the. Not like immediately okay. related, no. Okay. But there, there's a couple big names in the pedigree that match up. So nice. I thought your brother, he's but, he's has the one now, or does he get? He he's got it? a. He's got a short hair that's like eight or nine. Okay. That's he's a he's a decent dog. I, I like him. Like he he he, he can <laughs> tell find me the, birds. Tell me the truth. He's kind of he's kind of he's kind of my penny. You know oh, what I mean? sure, sure. Like he's got a whole long list of issues that are no one's fault, but but the handlers. Sure. <laughs> you know. <laughs> sure. So, and he took out some cats the other day, which. Well, didn't do well with the landlord. It's a, but. It's a short hair, so and and a goat, a baby goat. Oh God! <laughs> yeah, Germans. I I like English dogs oh, a lot, gosh, man. man. I really I, do. Yeah, I and 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 Britneys. Yeah, the Americans and the they English. Seem, <laughs> yeah, they seem they seem to kill less stuff. <laughs> And bite less people, yeah, that's true. but that's true. I could be biased. Um, so besides Banks puking over your uh, your shag carpet, what uh, what's he been up to? How's he doing? <laughs> oh, Banks Banks is good. He's good. I think he meant tax. We already talked about Banks, Will. <laughs> You're losing your touch. Yeah, we talked about Banks in a roundabout way, though. I was I was I'm oh, very orderly. I'm going through the going through the line. Oh, gotcha. No, Stay Banks is on good. task, He's Jeremy. A... Stay on task. Do I need to send you an outline Banks... for these still? Yeah. I thought you were professional. A lot. No, I'm ADHD and scatterbrained. That you are. Yeah. All right. So... Well, screw Banks. Uh, on to the new pup. Yeah, Banks... <laughs> Banks is a rock star. New pup is... New pup is nice. Well, hold on. What really nice. what what did what'd you get? What uh what'd you pick up? Why did you pick up this dog? Tell us a little bit of the story. Uh so I picked the new pups from uh a male from Kevin Jackson and the female from Robert Jones. Um I didn't really base it off pedigree at all. Not that it's a bad pedigree. Didn't even 
I hunted, I've hunted with the sire Rip, and he's he's phenomenal. And I, I actually got to see the puppy's mom at a shooting dog trial in Montana, and I can see why she was bred to Rip. And I, I see them all just they, – they hunt like I do. They hunt Arizona. They hunt North Dakota, Montana. Sure. They travel. These dogs kill it everywhere they go. And I was like, I need one of those. Mm. You know, like Banks does pretty good everywhere. He did not do great on Merns. I was like, I need a dog that just like – just no matter where you put him, he's going to do – he's going to do good. That's why I bought this pup. So he's got a lot of big shoes to fill, but he's got the – He's got the breeding and the background to do it, I think. And he's stylish. <laughs> he don't even know why he's stylish, but he's stylish. It, but, and I don't think you, you said, said this exactly, but it's uh, English Shutter, correct? Shutter, okay. yeah. Okay, you, yep. didn't, you didn't double up on the Britneys, huh? No. I think about it all the time. <laughs> Gazes off in distance. Uh, <laughs> uh no, I, I had a Brittany with me this winter, or I guess October, last October. Oh, that's right. That I got my sister. And I, if I could have, I would have kept that dog. Why didn't you? Because my sister already paid for it. Everything's for sale. Yeah, right? I almost just sent her her money back. Seriously. And said, I'm keeping this one. Seriously. He just got, he spent a month with uh, Dogwood Kennels in Michigan. Okay. And uh, he's like, she, he needs to mature a little bit. Give him another season, send him back in the spring, and we'll break him. But, uh, not that he wasn't like he was point and holding, you know. He just wanted to wait for the pressure and whatnot. Sure. Which, which I understand. Give him a season, you yeah, know. Totally. But uh, he, he's a really nice dog. A little hard headed, but like super easy to be around. Like yeah. Penny in the house, yeah. you know. Just it's just super easy. Well, Penny, I, I I can't be in the same room with Penny though and feel like she's not going to kill me. Yeah, she kind of just sits in the corner and judges. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Kind of just sits, sits yeah. on the chair and kind of watches your every move. And like, you don't know if it's the wrong <laughs> yeah. move or the right one. Or Yeah, she's very, yeah, very judgy. I get, she gets that a lot. Anyways, the, the new dog's name is what? Uh, tax. Oh, Tax. Okay, I thought you said Tag. Yeah. Like, well, that's a, that's a no. Tag would be a kind of a douchey name, but to each their own. Hey. Yeah, well, some people might say the same thing about tax or banks. So yeah, that's you got a theme going. So yeah, I, I actually didn't. I come up with tax with you. I think you did. Yeah, I think I think yeah. I suggested it actually a long you time ago. Have, about time I named enough of your dogs. I mean, geez, <laughs> you've named one of my just dogs. Kidding. <laughs> no, I don't think you've named <laughs> any of my kidding. dogs. Because I don't listen. To, I don't no. listen to your advice. Uh I, I helped with Wynn's uh, registered name. Oh, her registered name. You did, yeah. 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 You did. Um, anyways, but, how's the uh, how's the pup doing? How old is he now? And uh, yeah, what do you what do you think? I think he's, we think you'll be able to do with him uh, this this fall. I think he's uh, almost five months. I think he'll be like the year you came out. Wait, here, he's only five months. That. Yeah, oh, I so think he's when older. You, you when you came out here the last time, Banks was about. What six seven months? When was six seven months? Yeah, they're 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 very similar in age. Yeah, so he'll be about that age come September, maybe just a smidge older. Okay. Actually, yeah, he'll be about a week older than Banks was going into his first season. So I, I'm pretty optimistic I'll be shooting birds over points. Yeah. Opening day. Uh, I quit working him on pigeons. He's starting to. He's starting to anticipate the launcher. So uh, no more birds. We're going. We're just doing obedience. He already knows. Sure. He knows how to find birds, sure. and he understands pointing and the flush. When so. you say anticipate, do you mean is he nervous of the launcher now, well, or just? No, 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 not nervous at all. He, he loves the launcher, but <laughs> it's like once he points, he'll just want to. After he'll chase the bird, come back, and he'll just want to repoint the launcher. So for me, oh, okay. after he starts doing that, I'm like, okay, you know how to point. You understand sure. that. I just, I just really, honestly, I just wanted to see puppy points. That's the only reason oh, yeah. I even put yeah, every, pigeons every, out for him. To. Yeah, so uh, see what he's made of, you know. But I'll focus on obedience because that's where I slacked with Banks. It, when I got Banks, it was birds, 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 mm. birds, 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 more birds. <laughs> Cause a lot of issues. Couple now more we're birds. going. Obe- now we're going to go obedience, 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 obedience. Wild birds, and then break next spring, hopefully. If he's ready, yeah. he will be. But that's awesome. Yeah, he's a 
I think he'll be a nice dog. He's showing a little bit of noise sensitivity since the 4th of July, but I mostly just to the fly swatter. He's, the he'll fly swatter. He'll in his kennel. Dude, I freaking that, hate, yeah, you know, I hate the 4th of July and owning bird dogs. I had, I had oh, my I dogs. I them outside. I'm out. In, I had my dogs oh, in their gunner, gunner kennels. I put a white, <laughs> I put a uh, white noise machine on. I fed them a couple <laughs> different times when fireworks got crazy around our house. And yeah. I just, I, I'm so, Man. I'm so paranoid. Again, they've never had an issue, but I'm just so paranoid of, of these freaking fireworks going off in my neighborhood and, uh, them, oh, them yeah. just getting the bad, Especially a young dog. Bad rep. Yeah. I, uh, I wasn't expecting it. I don't have neighbors really. So I let them outside and a firework went off pretty close, which is weird. Cause like I said, I don't really have neighbors. But anyways, he come running back inside. He's like, nope, oh, I don't really need to go outside that bad. I'll just hang out in here if that's fine. <laughs> but uh, yeah, he don't like the fly swatter. And I've done training pistol, and that don't seem to phase him one bit, you know. But we're just, we'll keep an eye on it, make sure I yeah. don't accidentally make ruin a good dog, you know. Sure. But I think he'll be fine. He's pretty confident in every every other aspect aspect of his life so that's great how does he uh thinking back on banks how does he compare to banks kind of around this age is he developing kind of same same trajectory is he ahead behind oh i think he's pretty close to similar uh banks might have been uh, it's hard to say because when i got banks he was 14 weeks old not eight weeks Okay. And the guy I'd got banks from had worked them on pigeons every day from eight weeks old, it, which it seems crazy, but also, I mean, it paid off clearly. Sure. So, and he trains dogs for a living. So who am I to say? But, um, uh, tax, like I, I, they're pretty close. They're both super pointy, pretty uh, tax is way more stylish than banks was at that oh, really? age. I mean, banks will hold his own now, but at that age he didn't have no, poker 12 o'clock tail tax i mean he's proud wow that's awesome he he points as a puppy and he's starting i think i can't tell if he's backing like he'll he'll it looks like he's starting to back banks at his age i mean banks backed everything from the time i got him at 14 weeks old i mean like you knew he was back and it's like is he back in he might be in a scent cone he might be back and that's more tax you know yeah but yeah banks was i mean you know <laughs> I mean, you knew when he was back in at six months old. He was, oh, he it was just, just, he's always loved it. It was crazy, man. It's, it's crazy to see. He different, looks so cause, proud, cause too. My dogs never really, and they still don't really back. They're like, eh, <laughs> a suggestion. What's that dog doing standing I think, still? <laughs> I think that's a, just a Brittany thing. And I can say that because I have one. <laughs> and it took a lot of picking her up by her. I picked Penny up. She's so small, you know, less than 30 pounds yeah. sometimes. I pick her up by the scruff of her skin <laughs> and she'll look at me and like she wants to bite me. You know? <laughs> just set her back. I did that for like, oh man, most of hunting season. <laughs> and now she just, she'll see a dog and I don't even care. This is bad, but she'll see a dog go on point and she'll either A, just like stand there and then sit down when I look at her. <laughs> like she's like, nope, not picking me up. I'm going to sit down. Which I don't care. If I can get Penny to not blow up a bird, I don't care what she's doing. I don't care if she's the other direction, flushing birds 200 yards the other way. As long as she's not putting up that bird in front of that pointed dog, I don't care what she does. She's Penny. Penny does what Penny wants. Just the less she's screwing oh, things up, man. the better. I love her to death. Oh, that's awesome. She's, I make her sound like a terrible, terrible dog. She's really not. I don't. No, think she's not. She's bad. not a terrible dog. She's, but she, I, she's kind of like a hybrid. She's kind of like she can flush when she wants to, <laughs> and she can point when she wants to. Oh yeah. When she was a puppy, I would, uh, I, you know, six, seven years ago when I first got her, well, seven years ago, I grew up with like one lab. Never had hunting dogs, so uh, I guess I had some hunting dogs, but we didn't really train them. We just always hunted them, you know. Yeah. But I didn't really understand that there was like pointers and flushers. Like I, I, I knew some would point and then flush. So anyways, she would point as a puppy. I'd be like, all right, get them, you know, because I grew up with a lab. So I'm like, aren't you supposed to flush this thing? And so all our pheasants for the first two, three years, I'd keep her on a check cord 30 yards away or 30 feet away. She'd point and then I'd send her in for the flush. So now she'll hold until mm. I get close and flush because that's, how I accidentally trained her to do that. So 
<laughs> and I just haven't bothered to fix it because I figured we're seven years in now. Oh, what's you're, the point? you're moving on to uh, to bigger and better things. Yeah. You got, you got banks, you got but, tax, you're mo- moving on. Cut, cut your losses in a, in a sense, but she's, yeah. a, she's a good dog still. I got flipped too. I got my brother's dog, which is like, I, I guess you could call it a co-own. She lives with me. I train her. So. So, she, so you basically have three dogs. No, you basically have four dogs now. Yeah. I mean, for where you live, yeah. it sounds, sounds about right. Yeah, I needed more dog power. Two doesn't, doesn't get it done. No. No, two. Well, three and a half. You have. Yeah, true. <laughs> Realistically, fair enough. <laughs> Realistically, fair enough. Oh man! Well, sounds. Got, I can't. I can't wait to uh, to see tax in action and kind of see what uh, what he's made of. That'll be fun. You coming out this year or what? I'm gonna try to, man. Look at my. Ca- I thought about coming. I was in my calendar. invited to go hunt tarm again in Colorado. Oh, you would die. Don't do it. They assured me, dude. The no, guy you would die. He, I know. I know your has, health. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Wheezes off, Mike. Um, uh, the guy, the buddy, he's got a relative to that tax pup, and he he's got goats that he uses to pack camp up. Is this one of the goats so cool. that died the other day from the short hair? No, 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 no. This is the guy in Colorado. Oh. Well, New Mexico. But how cool would it be to have your own pack goats? That'd be pretty cool. I'd look pretty silly out here with some pack goats, but... You never know. Go- if I got goats, then you got to buy a herd Someone, dog someone stops you. Goats. Hey, where are you, where are you heading with those uh, pack goats? Well, I'm just heading down to the slough for some pheasant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just out in the grasslands with my six goats. Um, Looking to set up camp. But how cool would that be? You just start walking with all your gear on goats, just hunting, you know? Yeah, man. And then when you get tired, you just set up camp. I wonder if Matt could, I wonder if just, Matt could make a final rise vest that fits on the goats. You had to carry all like your tents final and rise stuff? goat vest. Damn. Dude, it'd be pretty cool. We should. You know, you find that big 10,000 acre track. Yeah. And just You just, just get, your, go. get your goats going. They, get, they hold all your birds, your extra shells, water. Yeah. Plenty of grass. Dang, man. You're, I think you're on Genius. something. Genius. Yeah, Golly. except you got to take care and feed six goats. Yeah, they eat grass, man. What else do they need? Grass. <laughs> exactly. Take them, take them to the Fort Pier. Yeah, right. Oh, Dang, man. man. Well, uh, yeah, I'm going to try to look at, look at my calendar, actually, on uh, on air. With you. You've been trialing with, at With all? you, I'm a lot more casual. Um, oh, that's fine. Yeah, I, I might be able to come out first week of september actually it's, it's always hard man so my that's when my that's wife, when ben will be my here. wife's birthday oh wait so it was the first week and my and hattie's birthday which again my wife doesn't really care if you I'm should gone, probably come the second week and come when ben is here come when ben is yeah opening day oh uh, wait i thought you're isn't uh, your opening day the first or no no that's montana oh that's right well yeah North Dakota is the eighth, I believe. Oh yeah, I could maybe do a couple Tenth. couple days in Mon or no, a couple days in Montana, and then jump over to North Dakota possibly. Yeah, so we'll figure it out. Let me know. I, yeah, I definitely want to get up there. Um, I did not have enough enough sharp tail in my life last year. No, it didn't look like you got out as much as you wanted no, to. No, not at all. <laughs> no, but a guy never really does. I don't think. So. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Maybe some. It ain't me. Yeah, yeah. I'll I'll try to get up for some blue grouse. And I get out a lot. Oh, back to your Colorado um, adventure. Don't do it, man. Don't do it unless you're gonna spend <laughs> yeah, like no. L- literally, I'm, I was telling you, if you spend a day at my elevation, so we're at like fifty fifty two hundred. You gotta spend a full twenty four hours at our elevation, maybe two, then go up to the mountains because you would you would die. Yeah, I went to eight thousand feet nine in Montana. Chasing chuckers with our buddy Anthony mm-hmm. Grimaldi, and oh, I couldn't breathe, and that was only eight thousand. Oh my gosh, yeah, you would you would die chasing tarmac again. <laughs> oh, Thirteen, fourteen thousand. It wasn't bad once you once you got to the top of the like the top. Yeah, it, it wasn't bad at all, dude. But that hike up felt like oh, yeah. twenty hikes up. Did you have the uh, the can of oxygen with you? No, 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 no. You gotta, you no. gotta you, I, I'd buy. I had nicotine. I'd though. buy you some of that. Oh gosh, of course you did. So, <laughs> Good yeah, for the I just hit. 
hit the old vape or cigarettes <laughs> or something on the way up, you know? Um, Anthony Grimaldi, I've, I haven't talked to him in forever. How's he doing? Uh, he's good. Mm-hmm. He, he kind of, he went ghost off the socials, I think, but, uh, he was out running his cyst dog, um, at that trial I went to in Montana. Oh, nice. So he's doing good. Oh, good. Yeah. I haven't talked to him in forever. He's pretty bummed. He, he, he drew a sheep tag, so he didn't bird hunt much last year. Didn't get a sheep. Oh. Almost had one. Came down to the last day out. So oh, <laughs> I forget the story, but bummer. I felt pretty bad for him. Dang. Spend all that money and yeah. time and no sheep. That's a, that's a commitment right there. Oh, that's why I don't big game hunt. I'd be so disappointed. Spend 14 days in the in the back country and come up empty. empty yeah, the more I hunt, the more I realize I'm a terrible at it. So I just stick to birds. <laughs> you're you're decent at that <laughs> yeah decent. at least at least if i don't shoot birds uh, i got to watch the dogs find them and have a good time so yeah. there's there's no losers in bird hunting you behind some nice dogs exactly you know? especially seeing uh 100 pheasant leave a leave a field behind penny oh man it's a magnificent sight though <laughs> i've seen it a Dude, lot do you, do you remember that one field we were in i think it was in montana yeah, I think we jumped over Montana that day, and it was the this concentrated corner where all those pheasants were pouring out. I think we had like banks and gauge uh, maybe down. It it was just an that, unreal. I, I, like a long slew, um, kind of not a like slew. There, on both there sides was a there was a house with all the cattle. Do you remember the house and the cattle? And then a corner, and I was standing in the middle of the flush, and all, we didn't know if it was. Uh, this was wasn't the field you. Oh, was there like a little tiny bush down a two track by the fence? Maybe, <laughs> I don't know. I was standing Guess. when they were all flushing, and I was just I didn't even know where to shoot. They were just it, it wasn't a slew. Was, there was a house, a road, a big field on our right, and then this corner on our left. And birds were yeah, just pouring. I think I know what you're t- it was insane. I think I know what you're talking it was about. Insane. That was fun. Yeah, that happens a lot out here. Well, too bad for you. To, uh, I know it's it's terrible. You should really come to Colorado terrible. and hunt. Oh, I'd love it. It'd be fun. It'd be nice only to see a couple birds. You don't have to work for them. Sometimes I wonder if I have good dogs. Yeah. Or if I have a lot of birds. Well, you know, you might you might have both. It makes a guy wonder. <laughs> come to Colorado. You'll you'll find out if your dogs are good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, I might just find out I'm terrible at scouting. Finding, too, so finding the put it all finding on. the ten uh, the ten male male pheasants we have. Ooh, if I come to Colorado, it's not for pheasant. <laughs> Literally anything else. <laughs> I mean, I'd shoot one if I saw it. No, we but. we gotta, if yeah, if you do come, we should go up for some uh, some blue grouse. But that'd be fun. Sage grouse, right. sage grouse will be nice this year, man. I've uh, definitely still on my still on my list. Yeah. Yeah. You going to make any other trips? Um, I, I think I'll only be able to make one big trip this year. So I'll probably just hunt, uh, probably Nebraska, Colorado. And then if I can get up to Montana or up by you, Smart. Be, my, be my one big, one big trip this year. Realistically. I know I might, I should, I'm, if you go to Nebraska, I might have to cancel South Dakota and meet in Nebraska for chickens. I would do that. Cause I got a I got a guy down there that might possibly want to go. So yeah, they should. I got some good. Th- Even if he doesn't, I don't. I mean, what's the difference between Nebraska and South Dakota? One can't be that much better than the other. I can't imagine. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, they both would have. Well, does South Dakota have sharp bees and chickens? Yes. Okay. Oh so, yeah. So, I mean, oh you yeah. Your chance at both. Um, so and then, but yeah, it just depends on when you come. Uh, Bob, I mean, because Bob Whites don't open up until it's like Halloween, so late October. Yeah, I I would like to do Bob's chickens. God, they're both priority, but I've heard late season Bob's are a lot of fun. Yeah, but late season chickens are probably not a lot of fun. Uh, they're, they're like hard. sharp too. Yeah, I they're, yeah, they're hard. They, yeah, they, they, they so I'd like spook. to hit those early season because, like I said, I don't know how good my dogs are. So, <laughs> well, <laughs> you'll see. We yeah see well cool man um what uh we're, well we're gonna wrap this up um what uh what are you most excited for heading into uh heading into this season oh uh, the two young dogs tax and flip um, i'm excited to see what they can do on wild birds yeah. it's killing me 
They're going to be so fun. That's always fun, man. I haven't had a puppy in two years, so now I got two of them. One's, one's quite a bit older, so it's she's probably 11 months. She'll probably be a year by season. Sure. And it's her first season because she was born in like August or October of last year. Okay. So she'll be a lot of fun. And then tax, obviously, it's I got high hopes. So. That's awesome, man. So, so I was always so much excitement with young dogs. It's, it's the anticipation, seeing what they can do, seeing yep. how they run, seeing how they handle wild birds. It's it's a lot of fun. Yep. Especially when they show a lot of promising sign early on. Sure. It really gets a guy hyped up. Yeah. So. You, uh, do you, what, what are you shooting this year? Shotgun. Um, well. I bought that Browning two years ago, and then last season I almost, I don't know if I really shot it. It something went, opening day of pheasant, I shot it all September, worked great. Opening day of pheasant, it went, it kept going click, 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 and I cleaned it out, wait, and I wait, think which, I got it fixed. which gun is this? The Satori. Oh, okay. So, and I cleaned it real good, and I think it's working, but I don't trust it now. No. So I went and bought a 20 gauge Savage Steven. Okay. So I've been shooting the $500 gun instead of the sure during training. The nice one because I trust yeah. it. So Oh gosh. Nothing worse than going pulling up on a bird and just click. Oh man, it just grinds my gears, That's, dude. What, what do you think was going on? Was it just dirty or was something damaged? Gosh, I I can't imagine it was that dirty. I mean, I know I miss a lot, but I just cleaned it the day before opening day. So before se- September 1st and opening day, I think was like October 8th. So I can't imagine any gun can get dirty yeah. enough in especially, one month. Especially an over under. I mean, it's those yeah, are kept in a simple. case, kept in the truck other than when hunting, you know, like, yeah, I'm not the best at cleaning guns, but if a gun can't make it one month without firing pins being cleaned, like, well, they, I don't know. Browning's got a good reputation, so I, I, don't, I don't know. I should send it in. I'll probably try it opening week here, and if I have good luck, I'll run it. You know, yeah. If not, I'll send it in, and I'll probably just shoot the old Savage or go buy a new gun. Did, did uh, you ever pick up a Franke or no? Didn't you have a Franke? Yeah, I have a Franke 12-gauge okay. that I basically never shoot. Except for pheasant? Yeah, and I have a... 12 gauge Benelli, a 20 gauge Weatherby pump. I, I don't really shoot any of those three. It's usually the Savage or the Browning. Okay. okay. For some reason, I feel Dude, like I'm forgetting. T- you you got to tell me if I made a mistake here. So, a buddy of mine from work had a, gosh, it's probably 40 or 50 years old, um, old Sweet 16 Browning. In Not a mistake. Pretty good condition. He wanted A5. Uh, yeah, like the, the humpback, humpback semi, yeah. semi-auto. Not, yeah. They, did not did I make a mistake. mistake not or, uh, passing that up? Uh, hold up, fingers. How much did you pay for it? No, I, I didn't. I didn't buy it. Oh, you got it for free? No, I didn't buy it. He, he tried to, oh, he tried to sell it to me. He wanted, I think, I think he he uh, was going to sell it to, well, he sold it to a gun shop eventually. But I think he wanted 600 bucks for it. I hate you, dude so much should, should i have bought this i've been i i well it was in good I, condition I wanted one i wanted one for a while was it the old auto five or was it the new like it was like old, uh, it, was like it was like old school one, one. 16 gauge humpback like old school okay. i don't know why i've always wanted a sweet 16 i know i don't have any 16 gauge and it, it, it just i mean it's sweet but someone in my house I don't even, said no to I, it i shot the one of the new a5 well actually i've shot an auto five it was 12 gauge i've always shot those super well and I, i'm not a huge fan of semi-autos i hate picking up shells i like to just grab them yep. put the empties in my pocket you know but i shot i like to break them out late season pheasant when you need that extra shot <laughs> sure i mean you're not going to hit the any more likely to hit the bird but it makes you feel better <laughs> gives you some extra peace of mind if, yeah, if you're shooting three shots at one bird, it, you never had a chance. <laughs> um, it's like the old rule when you're hunting with a buddy. You hear one shot, you're like, they got it. You hear two shots, eh, maybe. You hear three shots, they missed. Um, but no, for some reason, I've always wanted yeah. a, a Auto 5 Sweet 16. Dang. So 
Well, <laughs> you had your, you think you know you had your chance. You think you know who your friends yeah. are? I didn't have my chance. I didn't know it existed. Well, well. I think he's selling it on consignment at a uh, a gun shop uh, down the street from me. So oh yeah, and so now it's a thousand bucks. <laughs> Probably no. I think they're selling it's it for eight hundred only for six hundred. I think they're selling it for oh, that's still not too. That's pretty fair. Yeah, I don't know. That's I don't know. I don't know. I have a yeah. I have I have a semi auto pump and then two over under. So I was like, I, I don't really need another one. You should probably get another one. I want to buy a side by side. I keep trying to get my dad to give me the one I grew up shooting, and he just won't let it go. Well, he'll he'll have to let like, he'll have to I'll let buy, it go eventually. Yeah, exactly. And I, I keep reminding him that day's coming. <laughs> no one, I no one. Him, I told him don't. <laughs> yeah, I told him don't rush. But <laughs> <laughs> speaking of, I wouldn't speaking mind of, are you uh, are you going to get out to uh, Michigan this year? Is well, that, the last you two can just years, say no. I've it's gone, okay. Well, I want to. I always plan so many trips. We'll see what happens, but I, I would like to make it to Michigan. I know I'll make it to Minnesota for sure. The last couple of years, I've gone by myself. Do you know, I was going to say, do you know anyone in Minnesota? Oh yeah, I know lots in Minnesota. Wow. Yeah, conveniently, last year. A hundred of a buddy. They have a tax litter mate, so I'm sure I'll oh, get fun. over there to hunt with them. Okay. But the, yeah, the last two Thanksgivings, I've ate a uh, bar pizza in a hotel room and hunted rough grouse, and that's been a lot of fun. Sounds so, great. Because you know, normal people go on bird hunting trips on holidays. Will. Sounds like sounds like your lifestyle. I just you know sure is. generally choose to uh, spend Christmas with my family, but you know that's just me. No, the holidays are the best days to go hunting. Well, of course they are. All the, everybody's if you, don't, if you don't have wife and a kid. Travel's pretty good if you don't hit the big travel days on the holidays. Hey, don't make me bring up the switcheroonie that you and Drew made a couple years ago. Hey, we're all going to go to Arizona yeah, that's how I know. in January. That's how I know. In January. No, it in, was over no, Christmas. No, it was in January, the original plan. And all of a sudden... Someone switches it to Christmas. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm well, still, I'm still a, bitter about that. You shouldn't have planned a trip with two single dudes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's my first mistake. But see, with my work, I I don't work for God, so <laughs> my, <laughs> my work, my work, it's easier to take off a holiday because I already get so much time off around the holiday, so I can extend my trip well, and still course. get paid for it. Of course, you do. So. For me, Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's Day are great days to take. Again, make hunting with no trips because I'm getting that yes. extra with no extra family. Couple paid absolutely. Days. Shoot, even with family, I met my dad. My dad bailed on Thanksgiving <laughs> two, two years ago to meet me oh, in a hotel gosh. room and hunt birds. You're just you're just built differently. No oh, man, you're just built differently. But, All right, um, we're gonna wrap this. You'll up. You'll be skipping holidays before you know <laughs> it. So. So man, you just maybe. gotta wait till they get older, and they maybe. they won't be coming home. They'll have their own families. Yeah, yeah. We'll all be and old. That's that's what I tell them. myself. I said someday <laughs> I'll be able to hunt my heart out. <laughs> yeah, I yep. won't have the kids, the hockey, the sports, the activities, and uh, I'll just oh, I'll be able to go as, as hard 65 as I want. Sixty-five to sixty-five to seventy-five year old Jeremy and Will are gonna have so. Oh, no, dude, fun, I'm gonna be I'm young, man. We had kids young. I'm gonna be like 40, <laughs> 48. 48, I'm going to be hitting oh. the fields hard, man. <laughs> well, you probably just have to wait till they're all like 13 and they won't love you anymore. Exactly. And you can go exactly. do whatever you exactly. want. Wait, wait a couple wait more till years the youngest, till they love you again. Wait till the youngest is 13 and I'll uh, I'll be good to go. I'll be buying all these dogs and gone every, yeah, gone every you know, weekend. That'd be perfect. All right, man. Well, cool, man. Well, this has been fun. Thanks for uh, thanks for catching up. It's always good to, uh, good to get you on the podcast and just, you know... <laughs> Pick the pick the brain Ab- of Jeremy. Absolutely, absolutely, and I'd like to know. I made it through the whole podcast without a dog barking. That's that's actually pretty impressive. I put bark collars <laughs> on all of them. They didn't even try to bark, but oh, gosh. it's because they know they have the collar oh, on. So I'm sure that had something to do with it. Oh gosh! Hey, have you uh, have you picked up the new uh, Garmin TT 25s yet, or no? Uh no. I saw this small mom and pop shop that had them in stock. <gasps> And, buy them and i almost ordered buy them, them. Uh, they're they're not in stock oh, anymore now they're back to pre-order God. but they had a video i was like and i was like well i'll send you the link for the company yep. i think they might have a couple still but 
I think the rest of them roll out in August. And yeah, I'll buy two of them. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to. I'm trying to get my hands on them before I. I was going to sell my uh, my minis, and um, but I, I don't want to sell those I'll, if I don't have a. I don't know. I, I'd rather have the other. Yeah, ones you in sell hand. everything. I'll keep my minis for extras <laughs> and buy two more. <laughs> I'm uh, I'm a little more conservative than you are. Yeah. Well, I just I, man, I'm. I'm so bad at selling stuff. I give stuff away before. I oh sell. my gosh! You I gotta make a, make a couple bucks, man. I am not smart, man. <laughs> I'm too nice. Yeah, I'm way give, too nice. Give, give me some of your stuff, and then I'll, then I'll sell it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those aren't give, usually the people. Give I me give your it stuff to. for free, and I'll I'll make a profit <laughs> off it. Oh well. Oh, good times, buddy. Up, All right, well, but. say hi to Penny. Uh, tell Banks keep keep up the good work, and uh, tell Tax. I don't know. I don't really know him very well, so. No, nah, soon enough. Soon enough. All right, we'll dude. Have to get we'll, to a trial yeah. so I can beat you. <laughs> yeah, that, that'd be fun, man. That'd be fun. It would. It That's would. Fun. I tried to get into that Pikes Peak trial. I don't know if you're going, but it was full. Yeah, it actually filled up pretty good, or pretty, uh, pretty fast. Which it is, usually which does. Is good for the Rocky Mountain region. We. We need to need keep growing, so it's good to see. Yeah, we've been struggling too. Have you? Oh, congrats on that Nastra sponsorship. Oh, thanks, that man. was awesome, thanks, man. man. Yeah, that looked like a big deal in the in the Nastra world. It was everywhere. Yeah, I'm excited, man. You're famous. Oh gosh, don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> don't say that. <laughs> no, it's good, man. It's, it's finally a, made it's it. A trial. I, I love. I love that. Um, yeah, I, I love the game. I was good you people know, and good people and yeah. all, all the things. So. Oh, I'm yeah. excited. I always have a good time. All right, buddy. Well, we'll be talking soon. Cool. Thanks for jumping on here. And uh, go uh, go keep working some dogs. Cool. All right. You Later, too, man. man. Later. And that's a wrap of episode 90 with Jeremy Lowry. Uh, Jerem, thanks, man, for, uh, for taking time out of your uh, your busy schedule of working and, and working dogs to uh, chat with us. It's always good catching up with you, seeing how you're doing. And uh, I'm excited, man. Excited for your your new pup tax and uh, see what uh, see what he can do this season. So it's always exciting going into a uh, to new upland season with a new bird dog, seeing what they can do. There's all the excitement and potential of uh, what that dog is going to be like in the field uh, when you're carrying your shotgun. So anyways, that's a wrap, everyone. Thanks for following along. And uh, until next time, go put some miles on those boots and follow your favorite bird dog. Take care.